how did you become, before I go to the phones, a spiritual psychologist and what was that journey? So uh, with, with spiritual psychology, what I, I realized before is that um, I'm an intuit or a psychic or whatever it is that, you, however you want to put it. And I found that out very early in life um, as a child, and I would know things before they would happen. And I would tell my mom and all of those type of things. Wait, sit and- for that, sit for that, because there's somebody out there with a screw face right now. <laughs> somebody out there like, sure. Tell us yeah. the first time, the first time that you knew something before it happened. It happened. How old so were I would say, I would say probably the most powerful time would be when I was, um, 18. And uh, I was actually scared at first because I thought that I was going crazy. I started hearing voices. I've shared this a few times, this story. And um, so I was, I was just like, oh my gosh, am I going to be committed? Like what is happening right now? And I realized, because it started happening when I was walking on the streets, I was going to UC Berkeley and I would pass by someone and I would hear something. And I realized the voice would go away when I passed the person. So I was 18. I didn't have much discernment. So I was like, let me ask these people if this is what they're thinking. So then people got freaked out because they're like, how do you know this? Right. And the the last person I said it to, um, my sister also went to UC Berkeley and she was friends with a lot of the um, um, homeless people that lived there and this one guy came up to me and he's smiling and he's talking and all I hear is I don't know where my wife and kids are so I just said I know you don't know where your wife and kids are but everything is going to be okay and he grabbed me and he's like how do you know how do you know where are they and I was like no I really don't know where they are I just heard you say you don't know where they are and he was like no I didn't because he was smiling and saying something else So I just ran upstairs. I started praying to God. I was like, I don't know if this is supposed to be a gift or what this is, but I'm going to go crazy if you keep this in my life and you need to take it away. Mm -hmm. And so basically what happened is I had a dream that I could throw stones and do readings. Now this is at a time, like now people are doing readings all the time, right? This is 20 years ago where it was like, maybe you'd see a palm reader like on the side of the street, you know, like there wasn't very many people doing this. And so um, I started doing that and people were coming, like people would come. And so, I mean, an example I remember was telling this one woman that she is going to meet someone whose name means beautiful. And and um, the next day she met, I think a guy named, I think his name was Jamil and it means beautiful or Jamal. I don't know what it was. And so she was like, oh my gosh, Anita, I met him. And she like put him on the phone. And so things like that were always happening. And what I would say, which I would try to explain this to people and everyone would be like, what are you talking about? I was like, there's no way that time can be linear because how can I possibly know something that hasn't happened yet? How can I possibly know something that hasn't happened yet? Obviously in some other timeline, everything has happened. And someone had explained it to me that it's like a CD where all of your life is already on the CD or a record player, but you, we experience it one line at a time, right? Because I was, it doesn't make any sense that I could know something that has never happened, right? And so what was happening with that was that people kept coming and coming and it seemed like they were coming for the show, right? It didn't seem like they were coming for any kind of healing or for changes. They would want to see how did I know these things and all of this. And so what I decided to do was get my master's in spiritual psychology so that I could learn some of the tools rather than just be this freak show. (laughs) No, everything that you're speaking about, I'm so grateful that it didn't ever come from me in voices. Um, My mother had this ability, but she did have the voices and she was schizophrenic. And I feared all of my life that that would be me, but I have always known things and I don't want to know things. And When I was very young, I would know them and I would try to go and warn people and make it not happen. And that would always go really bad because people don't want to be told how to do what 
they are. And then I just realized I was being given this information to get prepared. So um, that's what I do. I get prepared. I'm like, oh, that's what's coming. Okay, so let me get prepared or I'll turn it into a piece of art that mm. people say that's some crazy art. That's some far-fetchedness, but I know what you mean. And I don't know if you've ever read any um, Ted Chiang, but he has a collection of short stories called The Stories of Our Lives. And the first story, The Stories of Our Lives is what the movie Arrival is based on. Oh, I love that movie. All of that, you know, it's the mathematics of, of how light travels and they can measure it. And it's like, how can you measure where the light's going to go if it doesn't know where it's going to go before it goes? And so he does the mathematics of all that. Mm. And so it's like through this whole process that I've gone through through the last few years, I've surrendered to, I have a destiny and I can fight it or I can, can embrace it. Even if that is pain right now, let me embrace this pain because in this body, I get to feel it. And so my choice now is to embrace whatever life gives me, no matter what it looks like, this is my destiny. Let me stand in it and move into it fully. Yes. Ashe, amen, everything. And so it is. Yes. Anita Kopach is here. Tanya Pinkins is here. Um, do you have to be in a person's physical presence to hear their thoughts or to see things? Or is it something that, so, I so can, how do you control I it? Can just know their name. So, so what I did was um, I made a, I wouldn't know, maybe a promise to myself that I would not go into someone unless they asked me, right. Or unless we've, we've asked and we've decided that this is happening Who's we? And me and the person. Okay. So I call them soul glimpses now. And what, um, basically what comes up because I had asked for a more like calm way from God back then, usually what comes up will be something that that person has been thinking about anyway. Right. So it feels very familiar. Just feels like you're, you're, that I'm just saying confirming something that they already exactly exactly Mm -hmm. and so um that that is a part so when I when I did have because I don't have um private clients anymore but when I did have private clients um that would be a part of it usually we would open up with a soul glimpse and then we go into what comes up then with the person when when we when we've gone into that I do still work with people. I, I still lead retreats around the world. Um, we have one in Mexico in March. And, um, but that's the only way that I work privately with people now. Okay. All right. So what am I, no, what am I thinking? 866 What What I want to ask. for you, I feel for you. Anita. I feel for yeah. you feel for you this is a hard no but you know what though that it there's a level of that that's a a a blessing because I think many of us wish we knew and and I don't know if it's for you like this where you can see for other people but not yourself yep yeah so so it's almost you know like the bible talks about you know there are people who can speak in tongues and there are people who interpret there's there's all of these things um that we can do but we can't necessarily do so it it actually forces us into community Exactly. Because in order for us to interact, you, you, you're you not going to be able to do it for yourself. Yeah. You have to do it for other people. And then the, that person passes it along to their gift to something, somebody else. Like, And we all have gifts. Yes. We all do. We all have yes, gifts. And I think, you know, this journey called life is to discover what your gift is so that you can share it. And, and then if we all are sharing our individual gifts, then we're complete. Yes. We're complete. We're complete. We're complete God right? We complete the equation. Yes. 